So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get some of the best gear that you can get at the beginning of the game to really give yourself a significant health and damage boost. You're going to be able to get this exquisite longbow as well as a full set of superior armor that you can upgrade to be incredibly powerful, not only at the beginning of the game, but throughout your playthrough as well. Now, this is part of a quest line, and you can start this once you get to Home Tree, and you're going to end up talking to this fine lady right here. As you meet her, you're actually going to get a side quest that's going to involve contributing to the clans, and you're going to be using these clan community baskets to be able to donate items and basically introduce yourself to all all the various outposts in the beginning area of the map. There are quite a few of these, but there's a multitude of reasons that I highly recommend doing this right at the beginning of the game when you can, because it's going to help you unlock all of the areas in the Kingler Forest, which is going to unlock a ton of different fast travel points for you, but there's also a ton of these bell sprigs around, which are going to increase your maximum health, which is going to help your survivability, and you'll get quite a few different side quests and bonuses through Throughout all of this as well. So not only are you going to be getting great armor and weapons, you're going to be unlocking all the different areas of the map, rare items for upgrades, and a ton of different things to help you with your playthrough. Now obviously you're going to need to get far enough into the quest line to be able to get to the home tree. Once here you'll have a few quests to do, and you're going to need to keep an eye out for a side quest under explorations that is going to involve you contributing items to these community baskets. Now you can always find Nafika kind of in this little entrance area to Home Tree. The hearth is right there and she's kind of always just walking around this area. You should unlock the side quest automatically after talking to her as she introduces you to this area. And once you pick up this quest, you're going to want to start going to these community baskets, which are available not only at Home Tree, but at all of these outer camps. And you can find them on the map because they look just like this. They're all over the place, and it's going to have you kind of going to a bunch of different ones. And there are three steps to this quest line. Each step is going to have you go to more and more of these Navi camps to spread out through the Kingler Forest. When you get to these camps, what you're going to be looking for is an area that has this donation basket. So they're going to look like the same thing at every single camp. And when you enter inside of it, it's going to alert you with what they actually want you to find. Like this particular camp wants us to find a stair foot bark. Now I do have a couple of these in storage. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on the item that they ask for and you're going to contribute it. And this will complete one of the camps needed for this quest line. So what you're going to be doing is just going along the map and trying to find all of these different little camps. Now you can't use polluted ones. If you find one that's polluted, you're going to have to clear the pollution before you can actually access their donation stuff. Now finding contributions can be easy once you actually understand how it works. What you do is you want to go to the hunter's guide and then you're going to go by type and you're going to look for flora or flora gatherable. And you're going to look for the item that they're asking for, like the stairfoot bark that we were just asked to find. Under here, you can see exactly where they spawn. So this is most commonly found in these stairfoot trees in the Kingler Forest. Now, rarer bark can be found in the Great Roots in the Rising Spires domain of the Kingler Forest. So what we can do is now that we know this information about where it spawns, we can go back to our map and we can kind of scroll out. So we know that Rising Spires is over here if we want to find some rarer items. And what we can do is we can hit up on the D-pad if you're on the consoles or C if you are on the computer. And we can see here, now that we can see all of these different biomes for what they are. Now we just found out that the rarer version of these is at the Great Roots biome. And we have one of those right here. So all we would have to do is go to this biome. Look for the particular tree with these items on it. And you can also do a thing where you pin these items. Now you can only have three pinned at a time. I've already found all of these items, so I'm going to unpin those. And we could pin this. Now once you have an item pinned, when you use your senses, it's going to highlight a different color. So we can see one of these trees right here, which is one of the, uh, the trees that has this bark on it. And you can notice that it's glowing like this gold color now. That is the item that we have pinned. It's going to definitely help you out along your journey throughout Pandora to know how to pin the items that you are looking for because they can be sometimes a bit of a pain and so you kind of get the hang of exactly how all of this stuff works. But I do have to say I actually really enjoy the process of hunting down all of this stuff. 
And once you find it, you're just going to figure out which way you need to be able to pull it out without actually ruining it. There we go. And we've collected one of the items that we need. It is essentially the process of doing all of these contributions. Now, as I mentioned, there are three legs of this quest, all consisting of just donating to these different community baskets. And every time you complete one tier of this, you're going to unlock not only a free item to wear, but also that item's crafting schematic. So that way you can upgrade it over time. Like the first one you're going to get is the arm guards, which is the gatherer arm guard. And you'll notice here that it has a base health of 53 and it goes all the way up to 121. And the way this works is the items that you gather throughout the world will have different quality and different bonuses, allowing you to upgrade this armor over time as you find a better or higher quality items. So we're going to get a free one to wear, as well as the design to be able to upgrade and craft this over time if we want to keep using it later in the game, which is great. So we're going to get a chest guard, arm guards, a waist cloth, and a longbow, as well as all of the designs to be able to upgrade as we continue our way through the game. Now, as you complete the Aranahe clan contributions, you're going to automatically unlock the second one. You're going to automatically get the reward from the first one and the second one. The only time you'll have to head back to Nafika is after completing the third and final Aranahe clan contribution. You're going to want to head back to Home Tree, talk to Nafika, who's probably going to give you a side quest first, which is actually really important. But after you get the side quest, talk to her again to be able to get your reward of this amazing, exquisite longbow and the design for it as well. Now we want to do this side quest. If we run back to the hearth here and turn left, we're going to head to this little crafting table right here. We're going to meet this fine young lady here who wants to actually test our weaving capabilities. This is going to give you access to the chest guard called Natu's Shawl. This thing is very good, a minimum of 47 health all the way up to 178. And it's going to require moss as well as any tooth. Now, the better quality stuff we use, then the better stats we're going to get on this particular piece of armor. Now, having completed this quest line, we've got an arm guard, a waist cloth, a chest piece that we still need to craft. We're going to get into how to upgrade all of these, as well as an exquisite master hunter longbow this thing is so much better than everything else you're going to have at the beginning of the game you can make it even better by getting these specific resources at their highest quality to be able to upgrade them and that's exactly what we're going to go over right now now crafting is in one way super simple but in another way a little bit complicated but once you understand it it really is easy so we're going to upgrade all of this to higher quality and if we go into the nadu shawl here you're going to see that we need a piece of moss and a tooth now it says any tooth or any moss. Now the quality of the items you use is going to dictate how much of a bonus you're going to get on your armor. You'll notice that we both have sky rock moss here, but one's only superior quality, which gives 26 health. And this one is exquisite quality and gives 40 health. We also get the one ranged resistance out of it. We don't have any teeth, so we'll have to pick those up. But if we look through all of this stuff here, you're going to notice that the gathered arm guards, which you got from this, are going to require a hide as well as a piece of bark. The waist cloth is going to require a fiber and a tooth. And then our longbow is going to require a branch, a bast, and a horn of some sort. So what we want to do is we want to find the best versions of these. And one way to do this is to go into your hunter's guide. And if you go to material, you can actually pick individual materials and see which are the best ones you have found so far on the map. So we have storm sky, bamboo, and night leaf trees. Once you find these, you'll be able to see what their maximum damage or health or whatever it is, as well as the bonus that they give. So these bamboo shoots will give us a 20% damage when longbow is fully drawn. And the night leaf branch while having the same damage gives us a different bonus, which is movement speed while aiming increased, no effect while mounted. So you can completely change the bonuses that you have in your weapons depending on what you use to craft them. And I think this crafting system is really, really cool. Now the first thing we're going to do is craft the Natu Shawl, which means we need a moss and any tooth. Now we also need another tooth for the waist cloth. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone with this. And we're also going to try and find a better fiber than we currently have. Now I am doing this at the beginning of the game, so so everything that I get in this video, you should be able to at the very beginning as well. Now, we have a couple different animals that we have found here that provide us with teeth. The Cloaked Panther gives us one with 40 to 44 damage, and we get 8% increased wildlife damage. 
But the Storm Glider, which I've only ever seen one of these, we gotta find more, is 60 to 66 health, but 15 elemental resistance, which I kinda like, man, those, they are creepy. Look at their little breathing holes in their face. We also get a horn, which we're going to need, and the meat is going to be good as well because it gives us an extra 50% damage with the food buff. So if we can take down one of these, we're going to be doing really, really well. Now, the Hunter's Guide is really important because in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, you actually have to find where everything is. We get a couple clues here. So they're typically in remote areas or above the floating mountains and mountaintops throughout the upper plains. Now, we don't have access to the upper plains right now. We can also find rarer storm gliders found patrolling the skies over their territories, typically above floating mountains and mountaintops throughout the, clouded throughout the clouded forest. So essentially, we need to be going to floating mountains and seeing if we can locate any of these things flying around their territory. Now, in the Kingler Forest, especially if you've been doing this quest, you probably have everything unlocked already over here, and that's really one of the main reasons why I wanted you to do this, is because you're going to unlock so many fast travel points. So we're just going to fast travel to one of these areas near all these floating mountains. We're going to be able to get the best moss as well as the teeth here. Now, one extra thing, when you are going to hunt something, I definitely recommend pinning it. You can have three different things pinned at once. So we're going to pin these bad boys, and then we're also going to pin the moss, because they're going to be spawning in the same area. And we're going to be hunting for these sky rock moss. We're going to pin that. They're all going to be found in these floating islands. And what you can do is you can use your senses to be able to locate these. They're going to glow a different color. They're going to have a golden glow to them when you're near them. Uh, and the moss is going to be growing on these trees in the floating islands. But I recommend harvesting them during the rain and at night because it's going to be a lot easier to see. And you're going to be able to easily get the exquisite quality moss. See if I can find one here real quick. You just got to land on these upper islands here. And pretty much every tree is going to have this moss. You can see how it's glowing this gold color now. And if we go up to it, we can yank it. You got to be careful which way you yank it. You don't want to yank too much. Do light poles until you figure out the direction and then yank it off. See, we got the pristine, but it's not raining. So we probably didn't get an exquisite one. So we definitely want it to be raining when we harvest that. Well, I spent forever trying to find one of those giant flap flaps of death. I found one earlier in the game and I ran from it absolutely terrified. Uh, but I'm just going for the Viper Wolves instead. They have fangs. They're not super good, but maybe... What is that? Maybe you'll have better luck with finding the giant flap flap of doom than I did. Definitely recommend getting that fang if you can, but for the purposes of finishing this video, we're gonna get some Viper Wolf, and hopefully y'all are gonna be okay with that. I was really hoping to give you a position for it, but man, I can't get one to spawn to save my life. Now, to get the higher quality Viper Wolves, what you need to do is if you open up your map, you can hit C on the computer or up on the D-pad on any of the consoles, and you can bring up the bio map. If you head southwest from the home tree area right here, you can go down here to the Great Roots biome. So there's higher quality Viper Wolves that spawn here. They spawn in packs of three or more. And you're basically just going to run around this area trying to get clean kills on them and collecting as many of these teeth as you can to try and get an exquisite quality one. To get high quality Stairfoot Bark, which is one we're going to use because you can get the 5% elemental resistance from it, which I think comes in pretty handy. You can also get the Scale Bark. That gives you 2% melee resistance, and I'm not getting meleeed a lot, but it's up to you which one you want to do. Uh, but for this video, we're going to be doing the Stairfoot Bark, and to be able to get a high quality Stairfoot Bark, you're going to want to go to the Rising Spires, which is southeast of, of Home Tree. And you're going to look for certain biomes. You can hit up on the D-pad or C on the PC. And we need to go inside the Great Roots biome here, which is right next to this little tower. There's not a lot of Great Roots biomes, but this will actually tell you where all these other additional locations are. It's super helpful. And you're going to be looking for these things called Stairfoot Trees. You can scan them. They have big mushrooms on them. In this area, you really can't miss them. They are everywhere. And as you climb up stairfoot trees, sorry, we're being attacked by a helicopter at the moment. You can find these bad boys right here. So we want to make sure we pull it off without messing up a single time. And we should get a higher quality stairfoot bark. Excuse me. I'm trying to do something here. Look, I got my exquisite bark. Now I can murder your face. Go away. Be gone, foul beast. Now to get high quality bruise moss, you're gonna wanna go to Spinner's Circle, which is actually right near where like this HQ is, the Resistance Headquarters, which is east of Home Tree. Inside of this little area, if you go to the island inside of Dyer's Bowl, you're gonna be able to find quite a few of this just kinda sitting around on the rocks. But there's also another thing that potentially spawns here as well. 
Let's see if it's yank this up. Hopefully we can get an exquisite quality. It's not raining. Let's see what we get. We got to find quality, but you can kind of go around this little area here and you can find them kind of on the banks and things like that. But one other thing will spawn in this area too that we're going to want to take down for our upgrades and that's these bad boys right here. We want the Hammerhead Titanothair or however you say that. They drop horns, hide, and fatty meat. Now you want to be able to take these out and get the exquisite quality stuff from them. You can see where the weak point is and um, we'll take that out in just a second, but they spawn in this area as well. Now, I definitely don't recommend fighting these things head on when you first start. They are pretty difficult, so I recommend getting a little bit of distance and making sure just to hit them right in their weak points. I did not hit that thing in its weak point. But we're using a bow. You can use heavy bows and stuff like that, uh, but we are using that legendary bow or exquisite bow that we got. I don't know why I'm calling it legendary. I don't want to mess around with this kid, but it should come running back. Just kind of Take your time when taking these out. If you fight them head on, you're going to probably have not a great time. I killed the one of these without really doing much work before, and I was still able to get the exquisite quality. I think the elder ones, they always drop it. But just take down one and get all of that sweet, sweet loot. Okay, so now that we got all of the pieces to at least build this Natu's shawl, we are going to use the Bruise Moss to complete the quest. I don't really want the 2% stealth, but we do want to complete this quest line. I couldn't find the super good teeth, so I went with Viper Wolf Teeth. But still, 64 health is so much better than everything else you're going to get at the start of the game. Definitely want to equip that after crafting. And then we want to complete this quest. And Natu's a bummer, I'll tell you what. Make her happy. But before we do that, we're going to upgrade the rest of our gear. So we did get these gathered arm guards. We've got the hammerhead heavy hide, which we got from that thing. We also got the stairfoot bark, which gives us 82 health. So that's a pretty big upgrade from what we already had. So we're going to craft that and equip it. Now what you need to do is you need to talk to this guy here who's going to give you a new recipe, which is poo poo. And you need to craft that, and she's going to get very upset about it. Now, since I've already shown you where to get Skyrock Moss, you're going to get a new quest where you want to build exactly the same thing, but using Skyrock Moss. This time, we're going to use another Viper Wolf Tooth, and we're going to craft this bad boy. Now, one of the last upgrades that we're going to need is a stick of some sort to be able to upgrade the bow that we got. Now, we definitely want to get a high-quality stick, and one of the best places to do this is going to be in the Blackwater Basin. You can go along this cliffside right here, and you'll be able to find these bad boys along the cliff, really right next to that fast travel point that is right here on the map. So go up to this cliff, and you're going to kind of point it to the left here, and you're going to break this off. We should be able to get an exquisite one pretty easily. We got a superior one there. Come on, exquisite. Let's go, baby. Give me that good, good. Now, thankfully, this area has a ton of these, so you shouldn't have a problem getting an exquisite one in this particular spot. If you don't get one and you harvest all of it, just go back to the fast travel point and rest for a couple of days. Wait for rain again, because you do want to collect these during the rain. Wait for rain, and then you should be able to get your exquisite one. Now, depending on the quality of the exquisite items that you can get, you can get this quite a bit higher damage. Uh, the ones I got allowed me to get to level 80 damage, but I also changed it to Ferocious Charge, which means my movement speed is increased for 10 seconds when an enemy is killed, and I have Steady Aim, which means my move speed and aiming is increased well, while aiming is increased, not affected while mounted. We also have 5% more RDA damage and 8% increased weak spot damage, which is pretty great. So I do hope this allowed you to learn a lot about the game and provide you with a chance to upgrade your character pretty well at the beginning of the game. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.